What's up, Puma Power Ass Crew? Today's video, we're doing ring and pinion. Well, actually, we're just doing pinion gear. For a ring and pinion install, you kind of set your pinion up a little bit, then you put your ring gear in because you got to set your pinion depth first. But I'm going to do the pinion gear first, which shows you how to set your pinion preload and your pinion depth. But the pinion depth will have to be changed when you put your ring gear in, if that makes any sense whatsoever. You'll see. First pinion gear, second ring gear. All right, enough of gabbing. Let's put a pinion in. So the first race we're gonna put in is this one. This is the one we knocked out. Timken number 02820. Timken 02820. And we're just gonna hammer the race in. We're not worrying about the bearing just yet. There is no setup on these bearings right here because there's no shims, nothing goes in behind it. So it's okay to go hammer this one in and call it a day. We'll start working on the preload of the pinion gear. Okay, in our bushing driver set, looks like I'm gonna use the 72 millimeter. You would think it'd go in like this right here, but the problem with this, I don't like the way it sits against the surface of the race here. But if you turn it around, it's the exact diameter, maybe just a smidge smaller, which is good. We can drive it in that way. So we'll put our handle on there, this backwards, and drive her home with that. Set your race in here like such. It kind of self-centers itself pretty much. Your bearing race driver, seal driver, or whatever you want to call it. Start giving this just some light taps to kind of get it started. There we go. She's going in. Get the seat in there and just Drive her home. If, hear up. Hear how solid that sounds? That means she's seated. It'd be a low thud, low thud. All of a sudden you hear a ting. It gets a higher pitch sound to it. So I know that lets you know that it is seated and ready to go. Don't worry about putting your oil seal in yet. Because we'll do that last. When we get all the pairing preload and all that stuff, we'll pull the uh, pinion back out and put all the seals in, all that fun stuff. So don't worry about the seal quite yet. You don't want to damage it through your setup. Now there's one thing you need to look out for. This is the old pinion, and here is the new pinion. When you go to press your bearing on the new pinion, you don't want to take your press and be pushing against the cage of your bearing right there. So what you need is something to come over this to press on the inside seat of the bearing. Therefore, it doesn't take any, you no. Know, Therefore, it doesn't apply any pressure to the cage or your roller bearings here. So how do you do that? What do we do? Well, I went through my toolbox in there looking for something that was the right size to touch just this, but everything I had was gonna be on the cage. So what we're gonna do is take this, cut that cage here, and get up in here and cut up here, get all the neat roller bearings off of it, because obviously this is the old bearing. Then I'm gonna split that piece right there then I'm going to split the inner race, and we'll use that to press the new bearing off so we don't damage the new bearing. And after you get a few bearings out, there she goes. She's out. Before I go this route right here, what I'm going to try to attempt to do, I got the bearing puller. It's catching right on the lip right there, that bearing, uh, bearing seat race, whatever you want to call it. Looks like I've got enough meat right there that I should be able to pull the thing off there. If I can, great, that'll get that race off there. Then I'll take that tool right there and go ahead and split this. Let's just see if we can get this off. Then I'll show you what's going on. Now I've got these snowed up. I've got the jack shaft put in place. I'd feel a lot better if it had one of those shoes that actually butt against this and allows this to turn inside the uh, shoe thingy. Uh, what am I talking about? Come over here, I'll show you. On this set right here, these little pads right here go up inside the jack shaft here, which allows it to turn on them right there it makes it much easier to turn but this kit i'm using over there don't have that so there you go so i'm not going to bore you to death i'm going to throw the ratchet to this thing and break that thing loose and hopefully pull that off i'll let you know in a minute so here's what we got set up got the long ratchet cranking on it it's pressing against the pinion pinion's going that way there's the race it's pushing it out because look come over here you see we got a wide gap going there, so we got the pinion on the way out. It's working, people. Yeah, I use my big C-clamp to hold the device down to my press. I can see in the comments, some of y'all are going to say, uh, Chuck, you got to strap it down to the press. Why don't you just use the press? Look at something a little bit closer. Let me show you. 
in order to use the press I have to put these right here on the press plate which will be laying across here then this arbor will come down it will press this out of there well this is sitting right up on that now that I have to say this I really don't it would have bent the snot out of it but the thing of it is press place would have been sitting here and here and also the pinion the damper of it is just gonna be riding barely on the edge of this right here so would it have worked i probably could have made it work but there was potential for that for the plates when you got them laying across here and pressing this out for it to slide off this because of the uh oil shield here being such a large damper on the outside of your flanges here so that's why i'm not using the press it would have been a lot easier true statement but that's just what they'll be and there we go sweet now why did i want to keep that because i am going to make a tool to use on the press to press the new bearing on so now i'll take this i'll split me a line right down through there all i gotta do is separate that and what's going to make it what that's going to do is allow this right here to slide up and down that pinion so whenever i press the new bearing on i can put the pressure on this and on the bottom race part of the bearing not damage the bearing but you'll see that when we press it on so i'm gonna split this baby right here and we'll be back in a bit getting to our yukon dana 30 rebuild kit pick out our bearing we got eight six four nine eight six four nine so we are about to press that into place and here's our new oil ring so let's press that on real quick now before we do we can look at the old one and just confirm look no extra shims nothing like that so there's no extra setup on this hence the reason you can go ahead and press your bearing on this because after we get this done we'll work on our pinion preload so build your pinion now see this surface right here that is this surface right here so we take this flip it upside down like that and it holds it center because you're resting on this it holds it center puts all the press pressure directly on that seat right there pressing it in place that is the way you're supposed to do it hence the reason making tools to protect your bearings we you set your press plates up set them up till you got the small diameter right there and that was chips i need to flip that one i've had this press for a long time it's an old school harbor freight special so turn them like that we'll put a bearing seat right there the tool thing we made will rest right here this will put this right here will push down and press the pinion directly into the bearing as you will see so here's our setup pinion got the disc in place that is set into the bearing and ready to be pressed in and then we have our tool we made pressing on the proper part of the bearing so let's press her in so I had to get a little fancy. I got me another spacer right there, put another part out of a bearing. There's that bearing race. And now I've got an impact socket right here to get this started because if I jacked this part up to the next hole over here, I didn't I wouldn't have enough room. But I was trying to use a big socket, big long socket, and that wasn't gonna work because it was too long. So there we go. I got a spacer here and put that there and get it started. And she's sliding on down. Now I'm going to pause here for a moment just for a tip. I'm using this little small socket like this. And if I felt this bearing was going like very, very hard and I was putting a lot of pressure on it, I would take this right here out because it's not very big diameter. And if the, the shaft here, the arbor, was to kick one way or another, the socket would be a projectile. So you take your choice, you take you make your own choices there whether you want to do something like this. Or uh, if I had another set of plates, I would stack my plates to get a little bit more out of it. But you're using a lot of pressure here right now it's going pretty easy but if you always have to use a lot of pressure just be safe about it about there it's about to hit uh, uh, uh we are making contact all right we're there because the disc is no longer moving we're good so here's a race it's gonna sit over top of that that'll go inside the differential or well, we're gonna have shims here and uh, I don't have that part because I've got the bearings right here. I've got the other parts are over there in the Jeep. But right here is where the shims are going to be back in behind this. So it's going to move the pinion in and out till we get the proper preload. Which means when we tighten down the nut right here, the squeeze that it creates 
between your bearing seeds and the nut pressing in right there has to be a certain amount. Too loose, your bearings will have too much clearance, they'll smoke your bearings. Too tight, they'll squeeze too hard, they'll smoke your bearings. So make sure you get this part right. But we're not using this race, remember? Because we've got a setup race. We'll start that procedure next. Time to set the preload on the pinion. Here's what we need. Here's our new washer and our Yukon kit. And here we have shims. We may use the old shims. We just have to figure it out as we go. So let's take these and let's back there at the pinion. Check that real quick. Now in the video where I showed you guys how to prepare to change ring and pinion, I demonstrated how to make a setup nut. But you know what is a lot easier. Just go to the hardware store and get you a three quarter by 16 nut. Call it a day. Save yourself a lot of time. Yeah. We'll keep it PG. And also we have our setup brace. This is the one that I put on the uh, belt sander. And I was holding it like it's right here, just going around like it's right here. Shaved it down to reduce the overall diameter so it goes in and out of the differential really easy. Why? Because we're going to be taking shims, adding and subtracting until we get the proper pinion preload that we need. In the kit came with two of these. Now originally when I took the diff apart, there was only one of them, so we're just going to go with that and add the shims. There's my yoke right here. Seal surface looks pretty good. It's not grooved or anything like that, so it should be good to go. The only thing I got really against it is the uh, strap style. I want a U-bolt style. So I got one on order, and it won't be here till tomorrow. So let's slide that in first. Notice the cup right here going that way. Right there. Day dang on you. You can do it. And like I said, for kicks and giggles, here's the factory shims. We may have to add some subtract. We need to figure that out. That's what we're doing here. And then we put our bearing race in. There's that. And what did I do with the pinion gear? And we slide the pinion gear in. I guess we're just going to work with it from the other side now. It's going to be cranky. Oops, I forgot to make a setup bearing. When this comes down over top of your pinion, it hits right there. It's a little slight clearance, but not by a whole lot. Just enough to make it a pain in the tail to take it on and off while setting your clearances for your shims and stuff. So, I'm going to take my air tool here, get inside there, go wee 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 all the way around that until it clears out enough to slide on and off the pinion here by very very slight subtle put pressure. You don't want it too loose because it'll you know, mess around with your uh, torque settings but you want it loose enough that you can change it on and off while you change out your shims. Cool? Cool. So I'm not going to put you guys through all the torture of the racket of this thing but I'm just going to Open this up a little bit until the slides get on that, and I'll show you the fit when I'm done. See, it won't fall down on its own if I take just subtle pressure. Slides right down. Pull it back off, comes right off. But each way, it takes just a subtle little bit of pressure. And that's what you want, because then you got zero clearance, or well, extreme little clearance, between your bearing here and this, the bearing surface that this rides on. So now that I make the setup so much easier, Yay. get her done. Be sure to clean the bearing good before you start using it. You don't want that junk inside your new clean differential. And again, be sure to put a little bit of axle grease inside your bearing so you get your proper torque specs right there. And then we got that big old washer right there. And yeah, put your yoke on. Sometimes the yolks can be kind of a pain in the tail. Again, like I said earlier, don't worry about your oil seal. You don't want that in there yet because you'll be taking this in and out. You don't want to damage your oil seal. The oil seal will go in once you get your preload set. Then you put your seal in place and button it all up. So I'm going to get that yoke on there and tighten it down and see what my pinion preload is sitting at. Now depending on how your yoke fits onto your uh, pinion gear, 
you may have to get you a dead blow hammer and just tap it on to get it started to the point you can get the nut and washer on there and pull it up on there. So you may need a little persuasion. I did. I've got my breaker bar here as you can see. I've got a button against the frame right here holding it in place. That tool right there, you tell you, makes this a lot easier. Normally these yokes torque at over 100 something pounds. You don't have to do that right now. Just get it a good hard snug. I can tell you right now that it's way too tight. I don't even need to put a torque wrench on that to tell you that it's way too tight. But for kicks and giggles, I wouldn't got my little inch torque wrench. And we'll just see how tight it really is. So you gotta use this little bitty thing right here because it measures in inch pounds. So we gotta adapt it from quarter inch. Right there, quarter inch to three eighths, then from three eighths to half inch to put this big old socket on. And the socket is an inch and an eighth. So I'll snap my socket on. And you don't measure from how much it takes to move it, it's how much it takes to maintain the movement. So I'm already at 20, that's 30. Yeah, I'm at 30 inch pounds, so that's way too tight. So, all right, so here's the deal. I gotta take the setup nut off washer, then I gotta get that yoke back off. We're gonna stick some more shims in there to give it some clearance. So I don't need you watching me pull all that crap apart again. I'll be back in a bit. So I got my puller on it now. Pulling that yoke off, yay me. The heck of it is, this right here is just set the pinion preload. Then I got to set the pinion depth. So once I get the ring gear in place, if I got to move the pinion, you no know, deeper, shallow, whatever, I got to take all this back apart again. And I might have to put 10,000s in the front and remove 10,000s in the back, vice versa, something like that. So yeah. So look at the setup specs in the Yukon book. Dana 30. The OEM shim depth needs to be 65,000s. You know, I didn't even check it when I put them in, so I'll pull them back out and check them real quick. And the opinion preload, you're looking at about 12 to 15 in inch pounds. Well, as you guys seen a moment ago, it was like well over 20. So I'm going to pull them shins back out and measure them real quick. I may have to add some there and see what we get out of that. So the beauty of the setup brace now is that I can grab hold of it. Slide it right on out of there. Now I'm gonna check the overall thickness of this stack right here. So here's my shim stack. I am looking at 46,000, so I'm definitely thin. So, in my little pocket over here, I need 65. I need a 20,000 shim or 20,000 worth of shims. So I'll pull out all those right here and fan them out so if I got some thick and thins. And we got 20,000s. I think it's two of them. Yeah, it is. So it looks like I got 10,000s per shim. Yes, 20,000s. So now I got like 72, so I need to pull one of those. See my display there, my little lens? It's all jacked up. Many years ago, Nashville had that big flood that actually took out a lot of stuff in Nashville. And I live north of Nashville. It even got me because I had over a foot of water rolling through my little old shop. And so I need a 5,000 shim. So I had all that water got built up in my shop and it flooded a lot of my tools. That's 5,000s. 
and this happened to be one of the things that's in a cabinet that was down low and it got off in my cabinet from my tools and it kind of stained it so I got 60 four thousands right there so I'm gonna put that stack in and see what we get from there so I got the gear stuck it back in now right here is that race or right on here somewhere now we added shims to push that race that way which pushes the pinion that way deeper into the ring gear right right so since we put that race in there we took the races we actually spread them wider, wider apart so now what do we have to do if we spread them wider apart and our pinion preload was too tight earlier they're extremely too tight now simply because we've spread those races and we tighten this down to spec those races being wider apart now it's got pressure bearings tighter together because of the spacing we got right here so what do you do we're going to add more shims in this area right here now i've already stuck that stack up inside there and there's my stack there so we added 15 up here i'm going to add that 15 here plus maybe another 10. So I'm going to add about 25 right here to accommodate, to take up for that 15 we add here and add another 10 here to loosen up the preload. That's 20 thousands right there. So 15 and 10 be 25. And that's a 5 thousands right there. So it's going to get, should give me a total of 25, it's about 24 thousands. So I'm going to add that stack right there in there. That will take up for what we put up front and open it up just a little bit more to hopefully it'll put us in that range where we need for our preload so we add them in there and i've got a nice clean rag down here i'm laying my parts on so i don't get any kind of crud up inside my disc slide that up there so you don't hurt them get past that step get your bearing in see how easy that setup bearing makes life and once we get everything set and established, then we go to the real bearings. And I'll put our big flat washer in, then put your yoke on your nut, and so on and so on. So I'm going to put her back together, test the preload. If it's good, I'll show you. If it's not good, I'll show you. Then I'll tell you what we might do next. So I'll see you guys in a bit. Okay, we're tight. I spin it, honestly. That feels loose. you get my little torquey wrench. Oh yeah, that's way loose. We put the 15 in that we matched on this side over here. Plus we put it in about another 10. What do we do? Let's take out five. That one little bit thin shim, we'll take it out, put it back together, and we'll test it again. Baby steps, baby steps. And the, like I said a moment ago, the crap part of this is that if when we put the ring gear in, it starts setting up the uh, mesh where the teeth uh, mesh together, we may have to take this thing back apart again to move the whole gear back or the forth. Like I said a few moments ago, I hate setting up gears. Alright, take it all apart again. Take it out of shim. Finally, we're there. So whenever I move the torque wrench here, it's not about how much it takes to make the pinion move. It's about how much pressure it takes to maintain movement. So, here we go. She's sitting right on 15 inch pounds. Personally, I would like to have it just a smidgen closer to the 12, because it's supposed to be between 12 to 15. But hey, we're there, and it feels good, it's smooth, so we're gonna let her ride. Look what's here. Let's get it swapped. So now I gotta get that U-boat out of there, because I just completed a video about the difference between strap style versus U-boat style. If you want to watch that video, go check it out. So, well, Power Ass Crew, hope you guys got some good information now setting up a pinion gear. You got to see that you got to do pinion preload and you also got to do pinion depth. Also, in the ring gear video released after this one, you'll also see how to change that pinion depth and how it affects on the ring gear where it does we paint the little gears with yellow paint. It shows where the rub is. You'll see that on the next video. So if you guys enjoy these videos, give me a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't. Let's cool comments down below. And I appreciate you hanging out. Peace. Later, y'all.